with the hoop. The piece of equipment uh, that they're going to use, and this from Bulgaria, one of the uh, favorites for the tournament. Whether she'll trouble the podium, we're not quite sure, but certainly in the top 10. And Michelle Smith looking forward to this. Yeah, I am. This is an important competition as it's a qualification for the Olympic Games. So all the gymnasts will be hoping to do as best as they possibly can to try and secure a place for their country. This is one of the younger Bulgarians. She's been on the scene for a little while now. As she's one of the younger members of the team, she's got some great experience behind her. The Bulgarian team have had a little bit of a shock in this competition, where one of their gymnasts has actually ha has pulled out. Now, they've said this is because of an injury, but we also know that the FIG have confirmed that it was due to a positive drugs charge. Yes, a diuretic has been found, a furosemide. A diuretic, so the worry is that they are used to mask the effects of performance-enhancing drugs. That's why diuretics are banned. And unfortunately, Pecheva from Bulgaria is not taking part in this competition. stylish routine from her really clean some really exciting moves something we love to see from the bulgarians they really are showing great intricacies with the apparatus and really interesting and difficult throws big smile then from elizabeth uh, paceyeva you see the beautiful flexibility in the back and there's one of a very what, a difficult catch catching on the body there is a new code come out this year, a little few where there's a few changes to it, where basically they're trying to make the sport more difficult and, and more exciting. So you will tend to see a lot more throws and catches. The gymnasts gain extra marks for catching the apparatus out of sight, behind the back. There you see, catching the apparatus out of sight. There'll be extra bonus marks for that for her. And taking with the hand as well, blind. Nicely put together there with the coach. <laughs> Waiting for the marks to come up then, and uh, Paceyeva, total of 24 at this point uh, in first place. <laughs> judged on different criteria, as you might imagine, technical, artistic. And Irina Chachina, very elegant young Russian here, and one of the top rhythmic gymnasts. Twenty-one years of age, comes from Omsk. Look out for some really amazing amplitude in this girl's leaps. Oh, and a slight mistake there. It'll be a minor deduction for that, a point one deduction, which should be taken off by the execution judges. Slight mistake there. You can see she threw the apparatus and it just didn't quite go where she was expecting it to land. Nice combination of leaps there. a butterfly jump that's a very difficult move to perform in rhythmic gymnastics and that will have a high score on the technical value I don't think you'll see many other gymnasts doing that leap from her not quite as good as we're used to seeing there were some areas of the routine where she didn't look fully confident and there was just a little bit shaky but 
but she is one of the most beautiful gymnasts on the floor and a great technician. Just see some of the highlights once again here. Irina Chachina from Russia, 21 years of age now. There, a difficult throw, catching in a rotation on her leg. She might say, well, this is one, not one of her favorite pieces of apparatus, uh, but she is supposed to be right at the top in... Uh, all forms of rhythmic gymnastics so a little bit disappointed i think with this performance we'll see what the judges make of it all in second all around in baku a little earlier this year and first with the hoop there 25.2 well that's uh, good enough to take the lead away from uh Pesieva of bulgaria now then anna Bessanova of the ukraine was in better form this year than last, I think. Yeah, she seems to be doing really well this year. She seems to be a lot stronger. And the judges seem to be taking no a bit more notice of her than they have done in the past, I feel. This has Swan Lake performance. All those leaps just look gorgeous. This is really beautiful. She's showing a beautiful choreography and everything goes with the music. Her musicality really is fantastic. Oh, <laughs> just slightly there, finishing behind the music, as you can see. A lovely execution of that routine from Anna Bessanova, five feet seven, one of the taller girls, and uh, continuing her good form. She really has uh, been very, very strong this year. Yeah, definitely. I think she's really found herself. She's found her own style and her own presence, and the audience really have taken to her. There is, so she managed uh, earlier this year to take top spot in three out of four pieces of apparatus and second in the other one, which is extraordinary. Beautiful control on that rotation with the foot. <laughs> and there's one of the leap combina uh, a combination where she's doing a balance into a leap, sorry. Title holder in Ukraine of the all-around competition, not surprisingly perhaps. And 26.375, very nice scoring. Bessanova leaps to the front. That really was a gold-winning performance for me. Alia Yusupova of Kazakhstan in Central Asia. This gymnast is actually coached by Irina Vina, um, one of the, the head Russian coach, and she trains along with the Russian team. And she actually represents Kazakhstan. A very flexible gymnast indeed.
full leg position. Great extension in the back and through the hip. Falling out of that difficulty there slightly. In the technical value, if you fall out of any of the difficulty movements, which are the like balances, pirouettes and things like that, the difficulty still actually is counted and it's the execution judges who take off the deduction. Well, that was a good performance from her. For me, I just find her a little bit dull. She's got amazing body technique, but she doesn't really have the great presence or expression on the floor. And maybe it's just because she's a little bit younger, but I just don't really get any kind of buzz from her at all. There, she's really using her flexibility to her advantage. But her apparatus technique tends to let her down planes of her hoop don't seem to be very clean at all. Not quite as dynamic as uh, one or two we've already seen, perhaps. There, I see a slight mistake. She should have trapped her foot on the top of that hoop, I think. Nice outfit. <laughs> very sparkly. Alia Yusufova, 24.25, well, it puts her into third place. Judges like the outfit too, obviously. Now then, here's the girl that everybody always wants to beat. She really has become the biggest star in rhythmic gymnastics. Big in personality and also slightly large in size as well. Just under 100 pounds too big for you for the for the height do you think of five feet four well she just seems to have ballooned slightly in the last few years to take her quite a lot of time off end of last season and to this one but uh, plenty of time to get herself back in shape now that's just a build i guess but she's athletic and still got all the subtlety or suppleness i should say yeah i mean she's a big star in russia now you know she's kind of like famous as sort of footballers are in england Maybe she's just doing, been doing a little bit too much partying. <laughs> I'm sure her coach would say, absolutely not, <laughs> won't allow it. Well, she was suspended last year for taking a banned substance, and she did have her medals taken away from her from the last World Championships. This is a, her well-known routine to Carmen. She's been doing this for a few years. Well, it's jam-packed with risky elements. I must say that is a great performance from her. She has a really high technical value. Now that's the mark which is actually submitted by the gymnast before the competitions. It's written down on paper so the judges have it in front of them. They look at the paper and they look at what the gymnast is doing and they look to see if she's doing all of those moves. And this is, um, can be added up to 10. Now, Kabaeva always has a really high technical score because all the individual moves that she actually performs in their own right have a high score. So if she just does one move, it has a high score, a high value, sorry, and then these get added up. And so this is why she tends to be above a lot of the other gymnasts. Mm. Powerful performance. How do the judges rate this one then overall? 7.3 artistic, 9.5, I beg your pardon, artistic, technical 7.3, execution over nine as well. Second place overall then for the girl they all want to beat. But this time, she doesn't take top spot. Look, the Ukrainian Anna Besanova is number one, and Chechino, although we thought her a little disappointing, in third place. So the Russians continuing to do well in rhythmic gymnastics. And it is uh, so tough for Western European countries to bridge the gulf, if you like. 
We do have British contestants here. Rebecca Jose won, and Anna McKinnon, of course, has been the top girl for Britain for a bit now. As we move on to the ball. And here once again, Irina Chachina, such an elegant uh, gymnast, this. And a striking costume to go with it. Make sure the judges don't take the right off her. That's an interesting way of starting a routine. Could you do that? No. That was really elegant way of rolling the ball on the body. Good catch behind the field of vision there. She really does look confident and pumped up for this routine. Oh, lovely. There again, that butterfly jump. We're going to be looking for flexibility moves. So, <laughs> talked about footballers in uh, like British footballers. It looks like they played a bit in Russia too. <laughs> judges will really struggle to find anywhere in this to take marks off and technically she's doing some really amazing pirouette combinations nice move and it's got there it's beautifully trapped and the crowd show their appreciation of that that was a gorgeous routine she looks strong throughout it and really confident now we'll have to see how the marks come out for this routine. Obviously, as I mentioned earlier, she has to perform what's on the sheets that have been handed in before the competition. And if she doesn't do this, then there will be a deduction. Even if what we're seeing looks absolutely beautiful, if it doesn't correspond with what the judges have got on their sheets, they will take marks off. there as the ball came down would it or would it not stay but it did and the young fans very happy with it she still doesn't look too happy with herself <laughs> it's very stressful it's the world championships <laughs> I understand <laughs> well at this stage once again she nips into the lead with 25.625 there artistically 9.2 and just 9.075 for execution, so that's quite a low mark for her. Quite disappointing, that, that result, really. So the judges did find something. As Kabayeva comes back. <laughs> now, boxing at welterweight, you're saying, is that right? <laughs> <laughs> tend to put these rolling combinations at the beginning of their routine and have done for years and years. It was something that we used to see from gymnasts in world championships earlier, such as Amina Zaripova. In fact, this is a really similar routine to the routines Zaripova used to do. and her leg just off out to the side quite a bit. This is a relatively new routine for her. Oh, that was a wonderful catch. Very high ball. And what a lovely little pirouette there, too. We adjusted her right foot for a moment. But... What she has is the speed around her. 
and she also has a great awareness of the apparatus. She always knows where it's going to be, and she always has contingency plans for a lot of her throws and catches. So if something does go slightly wrong, she'll have about five different ways that she's actually been practicing of catching it. For sure. Marina Caballero not top spot in the first of the apparatus, but uh, will she get it this time? Music of Borod and uh, Bolovetsky Tanzi. And that was a dynamic piece of music for her to thrill the crowd in Budapest. It was jam packed with difficulties as well. There she's showing her bend with a pirouette. Oh, a slight overbalance there. I think we missed that earlier. She's very good at covering these problems up. That will mean that the combination that she actually did will actually be split into two now. She, they won't be able to give her a, com a whole combination mark. But as I said, Kabaiba is very good at covering things up. First place then, 26.6 plus. And the marks, artistic and execution up in the nines, technical, well, a little bit lower. So can she be overtaken again? And here appears to be the main contender. Although nowadays, of course, she's got a, another Ukrainian who's also up there performing so well. This girl has been near the top of the game for some time, 21 now, Yellow Fever. I always feel as if this gymnast has been a little bit overshadowed by others. Doesn't have the flexibility in the back that some of the other gymnasts you'll see in this competition have, but she does have great leg extension. Last year, two years ago, when she won the world championship overall. Yeah, that was due to the fact that um, Kabaiva was suspended and had Anchichina because of the drugs scandal that went on. Now their medal's taken away from them. Oh, great control in that pirouette. Really balletic. I'm not very keen on those leaps, those stag leaps. Just don't find them very attractive at all. Tamara's problem has been almost unstoppable back pain over the years times when she's considered retirement through it, I think. I think because she doesn't have any much flexibility in her back, they've obviously been working on that very hard. And although these gymnasts might look like they're made of rubber, they are real people on these hills. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and those backs take a pound it. And she's one of the taller gymnasts too, five feet eight. That's one of the problems that's happened to the British gymnast Hannah McKibben. She's been out of, tra out of training for about nine months before this she competed in this competition because she's had a lot of back problems it's becoming more and more common to be honest and i think that's because of the new code and the great stresses and strains it puts on the body you can see how far back and she's not one of the most flexible as we were saying how far back she does manage to stretch there you have it So a lot of courage as well as skill and you know, her favorite weights. Staggers up the steps. She doesn't look at no, there they are. You see feeling her back as she mounts those steps. Second place for her, 25.7. You get the feeling that she may not be around too much longer in this sport. Well, I mean, all the gymnasts in this competition will probably be aiming for the Olympic Games next year in Athens. 
all hoping to get a place for their team and obviously all hoping to do as well as they possibly can. So I, I expect we'll see a lot of these gymnasts in this competition will continue until Athens and then I imagine we'll have a whole new batch of gymnasts that come through after that. the gymnast in the past that I've not actually been too keen on but she has grown on me over the last few years and she's a very clean gymnast indeed moves smoothly from one element to the next a little bit thin for me I find her she looks a little bit spider-like on the floor I prefer to see a gymnast who looks a bit more womanly do you know you really did it up to please Caballero comes on and you say, oh, look at her, she's been in the restaurant for a while, hasn't she? <laughs> she probably needs to go and spend a bit of time with her in the restaurant, eating some chips and things. <laughs> she's only 17. She's got time on her side. Years of growing to be. Her body is very expressive, but her face... She's not really showing any emotion through her face to the audience, I feel. Which is a shame because everything she's doing is so clean. That, of course, is uh, Kabaeva's strength. She's a real showgirl. The smile never leaves her. And you need to create an impression on the floor area that remains in the judges. I mean, these judges are going to be seeing routine after routine after routine. And sometimes you need to wake them up a little bit. control there on the spin. There's one of the catches out of the field of vision. Good precision as well with the last catch of the ball. As in a Jokova goes to sit down and uh, takes a look at the score. 25.875, second place for her, the Belarusian. She scores well there on artistic value. Just think what she could do with a square meal. And a big smile, too. <laughs> That's an over his back. Already won herself one gold medal here at these World Championships, then, with the opening piece of apparatus. And after the loop, Anna with the ball. Using music from films and movies is a very popular thing for the Ukrainian team. This is the music for Pearl Harbor. this year than she did 12, 18 months ago. Yeah, she really is just looking amazing on the floor area. She's in great shape. She's another girl who's had her problems over doping in the past. Nicely put together, and the smile tells it. Bessanova in great form here in these World Championships. 
And I wonder what, uh, what the judges will make of this routine. Is it going to be enough to take her to the top again? Once more, she certainly caught the eye with that uh, red cat suit. It's very striking, isn't it? <laughs> the problems that she's had with uh, drug doping in the past were because she took a cold and flu drug, which actually is, is now not on the banned list of uh, drug substances anymore, along with caffeine. They've taken those off the banned substance list now. Well, it is sometimes difficult to be dogmatic about uh, whether somebody is guilty of deliberately taking a banned substance. We know that. Um, unfortunately, it's very difficult for people within sport uh, to make a judgment other than, excuse me, we found something that is banned on our list, and therefore, whether you took it deliberately or not, I'm afraid we have to say mm, there is a penalty for it. I think sometimes as well a lot of the problems come because the labelling on the drugs isn't always exact and this sure. can obviously be misleading. Yeah. We'll give her the benefit of the doubt. I think we should. I think we will. <laughs> So, not good enough this time for another gold medal. Look, Anna Bessanova, the last one on the floor, 26.55, but it is second place for her. And a terrific start in these world championships. Swapping positions this time with Kabaeva. So they've got a gold apiece and a, a silver apiece. We'll have a look at two more pieces of apparatus in just a moment here. The crowd going wild in Budapest. Back in just a second. Welcome back. We're here in Budapest for the World Championship Apparatus Final. Here we have the start list for the club's exercise. We can see there's an American in there, Mary Saunders. This is an amazing achievement for the Americans. It's the first time we've seen any of them getting into the final, so they're obviously a massive improvement in their country. Also, we've got Yusupova, who's from Kazakhstan. It's great to see a lot of different and new countries appearing here up on these start lists for the World Apparatus Finals. And here she is, Mary Sanders, originally born in Canada and also competed for Canada. Changed her nationality to American and it's all been up, up, up from there. Let's see what she can do with the clubs. there on that first leap in the leap combination. This music's not really doing anything for me other than giving me a bit of a headache. gymnast in the world apparatus final she really did do well it was a good clean performance good execution throughout the routine and I'm sure she's gonna get a good result there on her artistic value technically I'm not sure that some of the uh, moves that she was doing would actually be counting not having amplitude in some of the leaps so therefore they take marks straight off you need to show a fixed position in this move here. I'm not really sure whether that's a fixed position. Yeah, another area where the judges will say, right, well, we can take something off. We can take that mark off for her. We won't give her that difficulty. Big uh, smile from the other side of the Atlantic then. Mary Sanders 
representing the United States, 23.775, and uh, leader of this stage, but she knows it's not going to be good enough to get her a gold medal. No question about that. The 18-year-old, though, has time to come back and enchant the audience with something else a little later on, no doubt. Meanwhile, Irina Chachina from Russia. Can she improve on a... Uh, already got herself a bronze medal. Can she improve here now? Very light on her feet, this girl. pleased they've made changes to the code of points this year because it definitely is making it much more exciting especially for the audience to watch the gymnasts can't rely so heavily now on the, their body flexibility they really have to be able to do something with the apparatus and this is a gymnast who has got all around elegance yeah it's becoming more of a performance isn't it which is what you want to see, of course, in sporting, uh, in the sporting sense. Beautifully taken. The asymmetric throw and catch. Yes, that's correct. <laughs> Did you do that? <clears throat> Did you ever do that? Um, occasionally. <laughs> Judging. Judging the height of those two clubs, though, so the huge gap between them in terms of the distance when it came on down, when they came down, very difficult to execute. Yeah, I mean, it, th there are bonus marks now for these large throws. They do have to go a great deal higher than the gymnast there that difficult yeah. catch and an illusion turn to catch the second club with a trap really difficult there's not much margin for error obviously Absolutely these clubs if you, if you drop them on your head or something they're very painful <laughs> still doesn't look too happy about that well she should do 27 oh steady a little bit of a smile. <laughs> she scored 9.5 there for technical value. That is a really, really good high score. So that means that everything that handed, was handed in on her, she, she completed to the best of her ability. The shuffle the smile was about to turn to a tear for a Certainly a little emotional. Irina Ciaccini here. Feeling the tension, but uh, doing extremely well. 27 then to beat. And here come the Greeks. So Greece looking for any success it can in any sport at the moment because for the Olympic Games in Athens next year. So Andriola. It's really nice to see the Greeks in, in this championships as well. They've obviously had a really good training program in preparation for the Olympic Games in Athens. And we've seen them coming through, especially in the last year. moves for clubs is balances so you're going to see a lot of the balance moves in this routine they still have to show pirouettes balances and jumps Ooh, that's pretty ugly ending to that pirouette there that's one of the reasons i'm not very keen on the cossack pirouette just it's quite difficult to be performed as elegantly as possible they're not showing a fixed position also the head's not really on the back of the leg head not really very far back in that ring jump she performed either I guess technical values this will be quite low oh good difficult catch though there lovely ending to it 
Delaney Andriola, the 17-year-old from Athens. Actually came uh, seventh in the Continental Championships earlier this year, so she's uh, got some form, and uh, wouldn't the Greeks love to have her there up on the podium next year? The good thing about the Greek team is they've not just got one good gymnast, they seem to have a few good gymnasts, so hopefully in the, in the Olympic Games we should see some good performances and also maybe some medals for these gymnasts. There is also a team championship taking place, and we'll have uh, that for you later on. So you've got groups of girls on the floor, and everything uh, has to be done in sync, of course. And it's five girls performing at the same time. We need to hear you. Yeah, one rather pleased coach. 23.95, second place then at the minute. She scored well on execution there, 8.55. They didn't much like the technical side no. of the team. <laughs> There's something a bit more complex. <laughs> Zhukova then from Belarus once more. with a little bit more personality coming through. Small drop there, or rather a fumble. And we're seeing a smile from her. Wow, that was a lovely pirouette. She's really fast, speeding through the routine being clean all the time. Double pirouette into two pirouette, single pirouette combination. They're one of her slow pirouettes. Or pivots, I should say. on technical value, back bend. Very pretty. That was a nice performance from her. You're from Minsk, capital of Belarus, Zhukova. Young girl, 17. And, uh, well, you say that she's... Uh, in need of a, a little more to eat, perhaps 97 pounds, apparently, that's what I'm told, of five feet six. Slender. <laughs> Twig-like. <laughs> it's a shame she made that tiny little mistake, otherwise that was a really clean mm -hmm. performance, but there won't be too much of a deduction for that from the execution judges. Won't expect that a point one deduction. This double pirouette there was very, very really, clean. Yeah, that was absolutely outstanding. Second place then so far. And once again, the technical side of it, just uh, not totally satisfying the judges. 7.8 there on technical value. Gymnasts actually aren't allowed to enter this competition if they've got a lower score than 7.5 on technical value. So the sheet they have to hand in has to be at least 7.5. Otherwise, they cannot enter the World Championships. Bessanova. One gold, one silver so far. Thank you. 
difficult throw, throwing it out of the sight of vision. Two rolls underneath, two clubs, and then catching it again into another roll. Lovely control. Although this gymnast is very flexible, she doesn't overuse her flexibility. Very stylish. pleased for her. I'm really glad that she's doing such good performances this year. It's lovely to see her getting up in the medals and getting the results that she, she deserves. That's a move that we used to see years ago. Oksana Skaldina, another um, Ukrainian who did extremely well. That was one of her moves, signature moves. You don't see rhythmic gymnasts use their arms very much, in fact. It's quite unusual. I think, uh, I think he was, if I'm right, one of the Ukrainians actually wanted to be an artistic gymnast and discovered there wasn't enough strength in the arm, so turned to this. Yeah, rhythmic gymnastics and artistic gymnastics are very different sports. You need completely different qualities to do them. In artistic gymnastics, you have to be very strong. and also be able to do, obviously, tumbles and things. And in rhythmic, you need to be tall and elegant. Look at that for the score. Artistic merit there, 9.45. <laughs> Great stuff. And Bessanova with a total way over 27, way up into the lead. And the kids of Kiev are dancing. But wait, it's not over. Alina will have something to say about it. As you do that, that's extraordinary. <laughs> Talk about originality. Originality is something that is included in the artistic value marks. Each year a gymnast... Oh, oh a dropper. There's well. a point, point three deduction there by the execution judges. Yeah, as I was saying, the gymnast can submit a move that they feel is original to the Rhythmic Gymnastics Federation. And there's something we used to see in Kabayeva do. Yeah, she does love to put her foot under her chin, don't we all? <laughs> retain her composure. Never a moment when that smile left her lips either. Superb look at that and the speed of it all. This gymnast does come in from a, for a lot of criticism by people. But for me, she really is spectacular. And remember I was mentioning to you earlier how she's very aware of the apparatus. That was obviously meant to be a trap underneath the foot. But she caught it with her hand and covered it up. I mean, you would hardly notice that. I mean, I'm just guessing that that's what she's supposed to do. But you can see she really can cover up these problems very well indeed. There was the drop. Apart from that, it was a very impressive exercise. And that uh, little signature of hers there. When you get in that position, you may wonder how you get back out of it. <laughs> what do I do first? <laughs> it's really like a sort of Turkish puzzle. <laughs> <laughs> I think 
doesn't ever is going to be safe here. I don't think that she's going to top that mark because of the drop. And she's down in third, as you can see, as a result of that little glitch in the performance. So, not a happy bunny at this moment. She still scored very highly, though, on execution, 8.975, which I thought was quite a generous mark for her. But I suppose apart from the little drop that she made, there wasn't too much else going wrong. Just a low technical value mark. Alia Yusupova from Kazakhstan is back on the floor. The 19-year-old. What she can do with the clubs, we will see in the next 90 seconds or so. can't see that move from the front. It really is quite unbelievable. This gymnast reminds me a little bit of Amina Zaripova, who was one of Irena Vina's first gymnasts that she brought onto the world scene a few years back now. Similar kind of style, very similar moves. Oh, you can even almost see on her face then that she had made a slight error. Not a very clean catch, struggling with the apparatus. and also behind the music. Yeah, she didn't look too comfortable. Of course, we're contrasting it with uh, Kapaeva, who we've just seen, who looks always supremely comfortable on the floor. But, yeah, uh, she just oozes confidence. I always feel like Yusupova looks a little bit nervous and unsure of herself. Flexibility. It's a really nice outfit she's got on as well. I like that little title a lot. You sitting there judging, how much would you be swayed by what they're wearing? Well, you're not supposed to be swayed at all by what they're wearing, but obviously it does all, it is considered in the overall effect of the gymnasts. You know, you're looking at the choreography and, and whether it goes to the music and if they're taking on a character. So obviously, as an overall impression, that does have some kind of influence over you. And obviously, if a gymnast comes in, a, in an outfit that's not flattering to her, then obviously that's going to sway you. I mean, if it makes them, you know... Good place, then, as you can see. Yeah, it's, it's like if you were going to buy a house and you walk in, there's nice furniture in it, then you likely to pay more for the house, aren't you? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Is that a good analogy? No. <laughs> Now, she is the darling of rhythmic gymnastics. She's the audience's absolute favorite. They always go completely wild when she comes on the floor. In the past, she's always had disappointing results. She's been around for a long, long time, a really well-established gymnast, and always gets, you know, marks that everyone gets upset about and thinks, well, why didn't she do too well? But I've got a good feeling for her here that she really is gonna do something special. Oh, and then she drops it. <laughs> The change in the new code to artistic value, it, this gymnast really does lend herself well to it because she is just such a performer. Yeah. Yeah, for back with the kind of pace that Kaba ever had, as opposed to uh, Yusuf Pobre just a moment ago. Well, she's a bit of a veteran, but she's got a lot of experience behind her. And her routines tend to be a lot more exciting than some of the other gymnasts we see. Feels to be a veteran at 23. Mind you, I peaked at 10. <laughs> Technically.
technically this routine's not looking too hot so far. I wouldn't have given her any of the leaps she's done so far because she's showing absolutely zilch amplitude. You've got to see the head go above the head height, so the head must rise. Her legs are just going out, head's going nowhere. Which is a real shame. Oh, obviously a slight error there at the end of that routine. That wasn't anywhere near as good as I was hoping to see. I feel really disappointed now. <laughs> Sid, or Thid, as they call it, in Madrid. <laughs> There's the uh, the big loss of marks. As you can see, that was way, way off being perfect. And yeah, and she started off looking really bright as well. There at the end, you can see she's just changing what she's supposed to be doing, thinking as quickly as possible. <laughs> What do you think she was trying to do? Well, I think that she was going to try and catch it and then maybe do like a sort of fish flip where your feet come over and your back bends, but I'm just guessing. <laughs> I can tell. 6.6 <laughs> technically look and um, artistically 8.6, the execution 8.4 and uh, altogether not what she would have wished. 23.65 then. And Alma Dana sits there looking a little forlorn. Well, so she would want to perform well enough to get into those Olympic Games next year, of course, which may well be her swan song. But the results of the club's competition, Bessanova gets a second gold. Chachina with a lovely routine for Russia, picking up the silver this time ahead of uh, Kabaeva, who takes the bronze. We're back again in just a moment. Stay with us. Well, this is the start list for the apparatus final in the World Championships for Rhythmic Gymnastics. Uh, first of all, we're going to be seeing an Italian gymnast. This is quite unusual. The Italians don't usually make it to the final, so I'm really pleased to see that. Also, there's a Greek in there, too. These are countries we're not used to seeing in the finals. Laura Zacchilli, Polasorsa. Ladies and gentlemen, we continue the championship with the ribbon final. So here she is then, Laura Zacchilli from Italy. Laura Another veteran. We're looking at Al Medina just before the break uh, from Spain and uh, Zacchilli here. Also 23 years of age now. I think the oldest one performing in these championships overall is at 26. But uh, that really is ancient in this sport. <laughs> Oh my goodness. Forward walkover, two forward rolls and a clean catch with the ribbon. That is a really, really difficult move. Ribbon's one of the most difficult pieces of apparatus because you've got to keep it moving all the time. You can't let it stop or drag along on the floor. You've got to make shapes with it constantly. Ribbon, um, ribbons, I mean, coils or snakes or big circles, figures of eight, they're snakes one of our difficulties. It's very difficult as well to keep the ribbon away from the body. You must make sure that it doesn't touch the body at all throughout the exercise. It's doing a great job so far. Mm -hmm. one of the boomerang throws that we see in the ribbon routines very often. And a small toss with the ribbon, they also have to see that. Throw under the leg. And a really nice ending. That was a good, clean performance from her. I do tend to feel, though, that she's a little bit wooden in the top half of her body. She doesn't seem to have much movement or expression. Her legs tend to go out, but her body always seems to be in this very wooden, static position. Not that there will be a deduction for that per se, but for me, I just find her a little bit stiff. So marking it down 
in artistic terms a little bit. Yeah. You've always been pretty tough on it, haven't you? You have. You're a down on this girl. It's going to set up a little uh, group of people to support Laura. She needs it. Eighth in uh, Riesa in uh, the hoop a little earlier this year. And back in the World Championships in Madrid, she was fifth with the ball. She's a, a top ten athlete, really. Consistently, she does really well in, in competitions. You rarely see her make mistakes. But just fails to get on the podium. Must be annoying. <laughs> so Lara uh, Zakili sits down, and uh, at this minute, in first position, but only with 21.6, as you can see, and that will certainly oh. not be top at the end. Look at the technical yeah. score there, 4.7. Well, it's awful. It is awful. Well, the Britain was doing a lot of work, but obviously the judges thought, as you did, that she was a little bit stiff in the body. Ruta Lova will show us what she can do here. The Belarusian, age 19. originality move there, a double jump through the ribbon. As I was mentioning earlier about these originality moves, they have to be submitted to the FIG and then approved. And they only last for one year. So last year we had loads of original. Oh gosh, that's a bit of a silly mistake there. We are. Yeah, last year we had a lot of original moves in the routines. And this year we've hardly got any because they only last for one year. Another mistake from her. That's a shame, it started out so beautifully. Yeah, the nerves are obviously just getting to her a little bit. Very elegant gymnast, though. This is the first time we've seen this gymnast in the apparatus finals, which is a shame because she's a really beautiful gymnast and very elegant, and she's very pleasing on the eye. Perhaps a little bit more so than some of the other gymnasts, but. Execution-wise, I think she's really letting herself down. Obviously, a couple of silly mistakes so far. And technically, I think she's going to get a very low mark for that routine. Mm -hmm. A lot of her combinations weren't very clean. Not showing a fixed position in a lot of the balances and leaps and very little height. I think we can expect better things from this gymnast in the future. Obviously, just the nerves just getting to her in this competition. I didn't think the ribbon behaved as well as it did with Lara either. Yeah, that's true. Her apparatus technique was poor. Well, having done a complete demolition job of her, we'll now find that the judge will give her 28 marks. <laughs> I think it's a lot more difficult for people at home now to actually justify the results of the gymnasts in their own minds because they can't see what's written down on the on the score sheets. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's a deduction. If there's a difference of 1.5 between what's written on the sheet and what the gymnast actually performs, then the, the judges can take off another um, 0.5 off the mark. So you don't know that at home because you can't see the sheets but obviously that might be something that they're doing so that's why sometimes we see such low technical marks because on top of everything else that's been deducted and there we see it's 6.3 obviously there's been another extra 0.5 taken off and then if they don't count some of the um, movements that she's doing there's a margin to take an extra 0.2 off for that as well so you can just keep getting lower and lower and lower when at home it might not necessarily look like there's such a problem well, considering the mistakes that were in that routine, it's quite surprising that she was above uh, Laura, Laura's Achille in the end, to be honest. However, that's the way they've judged it, and uh, we'll move on swiftly to see Irina Chachina here. Got herself amongst the medals already. Now, what can she do with the ribbon? Music 
music with a voice sound in it. It's something that you're actually allowed to do now in rhythmic gymnastics. As long as they don't say any words, you can have vocal sounds in the music. Getting a bit mixed up with it there, I think, isn't it? Right, Matt. Mm, and again. That was a nice catch. Oh, the ribbon shape's really looking quite ugly, to be quite honest with you. Most are scratching their head over why Lara Zucchini got such a low mark, because her ribbon shapes were clean and pretty nice all the way through. Of course, she did have a nice looking ribbon. <laughs> I think it was because Zucchini sc scored so low on technical value, that was the biggest problem. Because our artistic and execution marks were fairly decent. The ribbon shapes here, all the way through, just not clean. I mean, she barely even showing a snake. You need to see at least four or five zigzags almost in the snake position. Almost not ending with the music. For me, that was pretty disastrous for her. She, th I think she knows it too. There's all the attributes in the sense that she's uh, a fine-looking athlete, a lovely poise, and good flexibility, and plenty of strength there as well in the legs. But you've just got the feeling that there's another 5-10% to be had from this girl. Yeah, definitely. I mean, this is a sport at the end of the day, and if on the day you don't produce the goods, then you don't get the results. You can see where she started to get tangled up. Ribbon's touching her body. She's all over the place. Yeah. yeah, she's trying to continue with the moves, but she's just getting in a bigger and bigger mess. <laughs> well, first place, but uh, still under 24 marks, as you can see. So that is not going to win. No question of that. Representing Russia, Alina Kabayeva. Now, and Kabayeva will show her how to do it, I'm sure. It must be very difficult for these two gymnasts because they both train together and have to compete together in the competitions a lot. So it's always a big fight between them, between first and second position. Again, the original start from it. Here we can see the ribbon is under control. Gymnast really has the shapes being made cleanly. And the throws and catches are looking pretty good so far too. She won in the ribbon event in uh, Baku earlier this year and uh, also was the all-around winner there. Third all-around in Kobe Esson earlier this year as well. The second in Saragossa. Well, that was a nice performance from her. Some really good parts to it. There's a lot of new leaps, though, that can be done with this new code, and I guess that, that was one of them. It wasn't something that I would immediately recognize. Let's see if we get to see it again in the replays. She's really controlled in that pirouette, really centered. Such amazing 
flexibility on those fish leaps and jumps. It's a nice move. Super flexibility and great dynamism once more from this girl. Kabayeva 26.525 and way into the lead with the ribbon. Statistically up above nine. And certainly the technical mark better than we've seen from most of the girls here. So is Kabayeva in for a second gold or can uh, Bessanova take a third for herself? exactly what the ribbon is doing when it's a dark red like this yeah it's not it's not important what the color of the ribbon but obviously if you put if you make two colors in one ribbon well that was an interesting throw i'm not quite sure if she was supposed to like <laughs> jump on the end but i think she was well again it's all to do with perception isn't it it's to do with where you know definitely what, what the ribbon looks like to the eye of the judge yeah. absolutely and if you have got a bad ribbon technique, it's probably not a good thing to have a really bright, flashy ribbon. Oh, that was oh, nice, yeah. A very clever little kick. Terrific final few seconds of that performance. Lots of lovely moves back to back. And again, the uh, crowd goes screaming in adoration at Anna Bessanova, who's putting in one great performance after another and is uh, looking like the girl to beat, frankly, for the all around title here in these world championships. Definitely, she really is like the showgirl here. Clean performances. We've seen a few mistakes from Caballero so far, but this girl here, she really is just doing amazing performances. And look at those turning leaps. I mean, they are some of the best in the world, I'd say. Yeah, doing some more turning leaps with catching ribbon on the leap. No, that we like that, didn't we? <laughs> She does look as if she really, really is enjoying it. Definitely. She doesn't seem to look very nervous at all. She just seems to be going out there, doing her job, performing as best as she can, and having a great time as well, which is great to see. Oh, I hope she's pleased with that. Second place, 26.375. Doesn't quite make it. What a shame. And the coach is disappointed, you can see. They reckon that was worth top spot. But not quite, so Bessanova will take a silver. I say that there are more still to come. But they are the two best in the country. I was going to say, I'm, I'm not certain that uh, the girls to come can top that. Paiseva has really improved over the last few months. This young lady, the 17-year-old uh, Paiseva, 
really flying the flag for Bulgaria in these championships in the absence of Simona Pecheva, who is not here ostensibly because she's injured, but uh, in fact, very recently she was tested positive for the diuretic furosemide. And um, I think, injury or not, they wouldn't have allowed her to perform, to be honest. It's a shame that these championships keep having to be scarred all the time by these drug scandals. They really need to sort it out. I'm sure we'll have a big dramatic case of she didn't mean to take it, the doctor gave it to her, which we hear so often. It is a loss to the championships too. She's a, she's a very pretty performer, is uh, Pacheva. And slightly different to the others as well. Got her own style, quite small. Yeah. Very typical of a Bulgarian style. She really just sparkles on the floor. Yeah. So it is uh, the loss of the championships, but there we are. Meanwhile, Pesieva does her bit for the Bulgarian cause. In fifth in the World Championships two years ago in Madrid. In the all-around competition. Just making very, very pretty patterns with the ribbon here. But can she upset the top girls? Probably not. We'll see. Extraordinary how they managed to do that. It's very difficult to throw the ribbon off the foot. The ribbon has to be constantly moving all the time, as you can see here. She's doing a boomerang throw. And catch. Just catching the ribbon stick slightly farther, too far down. And there her coach, who used to be a great gymnast as well, Stella. Third place at the moment. That's over in the 24s. The technical merits uh, marks pretty low, down below seven. They've been quite severe on the technical yeah. stuff. Yeah, I mean, that's because of the ribbon is so difficult to do, and they're expecting to see uh, shapes with the ribbon all the time. And uh, obviously, the moves that they're performing, the gymnasts, because they're concentrating so hard on the apparatus, obviously not paying full attention to some of the difficulties they're doing. Turn of Andrioli. Oh, look, matching ribbon and costume. final that she's made which is a great result for the Greeks getting in a bit of a tangle there that's a nice throw there off the foot gymnast has to get the head on the leg in these fish pirouette turns, otherwise it won't be counted. And also, oh, she's in a bit of a tangle there. I wonder if she's gonna be able to get herself clear of that ribbon. Yeah, she has. There, yeah, that Cossack pirouette. An awful ending again. And these are just far too far apart for my liking. No fixed position again in that move. A fix by a fixed position, we're expecting to see it's almost a slight pause in that back bend shape, but that wasn't there, so they definitely won't be counting that. I'm not quite sure what happened to her at the end there. She looked as if she was going to about to do a throw and then changed her mind. Perhaps she was a little bit behind the music, but she really does look disappointed, and the crowd wasn't too impressed with that either. Difficult throw to do, throwing off the foot with the back flexion, making sure all the ribbon comes off the floor. Not a very clean jumping turn. And 
And there a Cossack leap whilst capturing the apparatus. And here she starts to get into trouble. The ribbon, she hasn't cleared it away from her body and now it's started to get wrapped around her body. Mm -hmm. Incidentally, among the British contingent, Hannah McGibbon doing the best with the ribbon at 20.9, uh, her score. Rebecca Jose at 19.85 uh, and uh, Hannah Walker 17.9 and that'll put them well I guess Hannah McGibbon in the mid-twenties overall I think for all four pieces of uh, apparatus Rebecca Jose in the thirties somewhat so whether we're going to see uh, Rebecca Jose make I guess not we're not going to see her in the all-around finals possibly Hannah McGibbon will see yeah but unfortunately I don't think Rebecca will get through which is a real shame but the girls have done really well this year especially considering Hannah's been so dogged by injury 22 then for the Greek girl Elena Andriola I like the execution, but the, the other marks are fairly low. So she won't be walking away with a medal in this particular competition. Jakova might. Let's see her. Last chance to topple the Russian and the Ukrainian from the top there. It's a really stunning outfit she's got on there. through this a little bit too much for me. It looked like she wasn't quite finishing off some of her movements. <laughs> nice ending though. It was nice not to see the gymnast doing a big throw and catch, trap catch at the end there. I'm not sure that her score will be very high for technical value for this routine, but her execution was good and artistically she had a lot of special artistic characteristic new moves, which are the ones I was talking about earlier, mm -hmm. where you're throwing and catching out of the field of vision. It's a very clean pirouette, you can see beautiful balance. from Belarus then. 23.725, fifth place for her in a Zhukova. I wonder how happy she is with that score. Would she have uh, would she have liked something higher, obviously, but would she have expected to get much higher than that? She might have expected the marks to be a bit higher. I think uh, pushing up towards the 24s, 25s, perhaps, as it is. Uh, she's down in fifth place, but top of the pile is Alina Kabbaeva of Russia picking up her second gold medal. Uh, Bessanova takes silver this time. Those two absolutely dominant on the apparatus. Um, Pesieva of Bulgaria takes the bronze here in the ribbon. They're almost two marks ahead of um, Pesieva there, which is a really big difference. So obviously they're dominating the field by a huge amount. The class of their own at the moment then, uh, Bessanova and Kabayeva. These the two, they look like fighting it out for the overall title. 
But in terms of the apparatus, they picked up two gold medals apiece. So there we are. That's it for the moment. We've got more later. Join us again, won't you? Bye-bye. Avec, évidemment, toute l'école, toute l'expérience et cette originalité qui n'appartient qu'à elle. Avons-nous envie de dire cette originalité chorégraphique que l'on retrouve à tous les échelons euh, des artistes, puisqu'il s'agisse de patineurs, de danseurs, de danseuses en l'occurrence, et bien sûr de euh, gymnastes, avec ici donc l'ensemble au ruban. volontaire de rythme et à présent le passage lent de la démonstration. Observez également le travail des pieds, le travail des pointes pratiquement. Suite de petits pas en déboulé, excellent. C'est très très bien. C'est très très bien. Cette chorégraphie qui se termine sous forme d'étoiles. Et ce sont bien là cinq étoiles que nous avons sur la piste de Budapest. Les supporters russes sont également présents, présentes, car c'est vrai que c'est un sport féminin, ça déjà, on l'a bien entendu constaté. Mais c'est vrai que dans les tribunes, on retrouve beaucoup, beaucoup de jeunes filles, de jeunes femmes, les unes rêvant peut-être. Euh, de ce qu'elle souhaiterait faire plus tard, les autres euh, peut-être rêvant à un passé qui ne leur a pas permis d'atteindre un tel niveau de compétition, une telle densité. Superbe démonstration des Russes. Les Russes, effectivement, que l'on retrouve ici sur le podium. Euh, Parlez-moi d'une synchronisation, elle est parfaite, elle est vraiment absolument parfaite. Merci à la régie finale à Paris, puisque les Russes que nous avons euh, quittés il y a quelques instants, nous les retrouvons ici avec la médaille d'or, un hymne très bref. Et le temps que cette cérémonie protocolaire s'achève, eh bien, je vous propose de retrouver celles qui ont été des très dangereux adversaires pour les Russes. Regardez. C'est la Chine qui se présente. Vous avez pu constater 
euh, que l'on nous incruste six noms. Cela veut dire que la remplaçante est également citée. Et ma foi, c'est assez juste car elle fait aussi partie de l'équipe. En général, elle ronge son frein, euh, si je puis dire, euh, juste à côté de la piste. Et regardez cette entrée en matière que nous proposent les Asiatiques. Ça, c'est absolument merveilleux. Oh là là, cela commence de façon aussi poétique que gracieuse, aussi sportive que divine. une incroyable délicatesse alors qu'elles enchaînent sur le mouvement un petit peu plus rapide de leur chorégraphie. Ces jeunes chinoises sont en train d'emballer le palais des sports de Budapest qui apprécie en connaisseur les difficultés de ces figures. Absolument magnifique, magnifique démonstration des Chinoises, pleine de poésie. Et regardez, les spectateurs, les supporters chinois sont nombreux à avoir fait le déplacement ici en Hongrie. Les Chinoises qui saluent la foule de façon aussi belle que la démonstration proposée. Vraiment un moment absolument magique cet après-midi à Budapest avec cette démonstration étincelante des jeunes chinoises. Regardez les serpentins, surtout, surtout, il ne faut pas que le ruban ne s'en mêle sur les membres, sur les quatre membres des cinq jeunes filles, vous rendez-vous compte Vraiment, une démonstration pleine de lumière. Derniers échauffements ici à Budapest avant le début du gala individuel, un moment à ne pas manquer, mais russes et chinoises n'étaient pas toutes seules dans ces ensembles. Je vous propose de retrouver les très très belles transalpines à présent. L'Italie se présente pour la finale de ce que l'on appelle les ensembles, c'est-à-dire que on peut dire que les difficultés extrêmes de la gymnastique rythmique en individuel sont ici multipliées par 5, surtout, surtout quand il s'agit du ruban. Regardez déjà la position de départ des jeunes transalpines. Ce ruban qui doit voguer, je dirais, en serpentin, en lancé, en croisé. Toujours, toujours le surveiller en l'air, 
et faire attention à ce qu'il ne s'entremêle pas. Encore une fois, c'est déjà suffisamment difficile individuellement, mais alors à 5, ça l'est encore beaucoup plus. Ce sont les jeunes italiennes que nous voyons. parfaitement synchronisé et surtout un ruban en perpétuelle accélération tout ceci est excellent pour l'instant s'enroule, ce qui serait quasi éliminatoire. Il reste quelques secondes et cette chorégraphie devrait très très bien se terminer ma foi. Ouh, attention La jeune fille que l'on a aperçue là sur la droite de l'écran a failli sortir du praticable, elle a vraiment effleuré cette fameuse ligne rouge. J'espère que le jury ne lui en tiendra pas trop rigueur dans l'ensemble. C'est une excellente démonstration que nous ont proposé les Italiennes sous l'œil, enfin si l'on peut dire, parce que les yeux sont en l'occurrence fort masqués de leurs supporters, avec bien sûr le drapeau vert, blanc et rouge de nos voisines transalpines. Très très jolie chorégraphie en vérité. Alors qu'ici les différents plans des caméras de la télévision ont ce qui réalise ce reportage ne nous laisse rien manquer de la difficulté proposée par cet ensemble italien. À chaque compétition mondiale de euh, gymnastique rythmique, on retrouve la Bulgarie en général aux plus hautes marches du podium et même souvent, souvent la première. Nous allons voir si cet ensemble qui nous vient tout droit de Sofia va permettre à la Bulgarie de continuer à établir son empreinte sur la gymnastique rythmique mondiale. 